In this video, we are going to learn about using our calculator's built-in constants and how to do some simple unit conversions. So if I turn on my calculator, I can see that above the parentheses, open parentheses, there it says constants, and above the number eight, it says convert. And so those are the two menu options we're going to be learning about today. When we are doing a calculation such as the one I am showing here, I got 7.56 times 10 to the 25th, and then I'm going to be multiplying that by 1 over Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And so I can type that in as it is. But my calculator already has Avogadro's number stored in it. And so instead, I could be typing in the following. I could be typing in, and then where I want Avogadro's number to occur, I can go second, and then that open parentheses to get into my constants menu. And you can see here that it lists off a whole bunch of constants that it already has stored. And option number four corresponds to Avogadro's number. If I don't remember the name of the constant I'm looking for, I can also search by units. And so if I go down here to number four, I can see that Avogadro's number is stored as molecules per mole. This is also good, a, a good way of searching for units that you're not sure um, which units the calculator knows them in. Particularly the ideal gas constant R is stored in your calculator as joules per mole Kelvin. And oftentimes in chemistry classes, you're going to be using it in liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And so you need to know which units that R value is in because you might be using the wrong one for the units that you have. Anyway, um, no matter which menu we choose from, we have two options to pull up our constant. The first option is to hit enter once we have that selected. Another option is that if we know which number corresponds to what we want, we can just hit the number value associated with that answer or with that constant. So I know Avogadro's number is in number four, and so I'm going to hit number four. And you can see it brought down Na, which is what Avogadro's number is called. And so here we got our answer. That answer differed from my previous answer because I typed in 23rd instead of 25th. So there we go. Another thing that you can do is do some simple unit conversions. So let's say that I need to convert 89 degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. On an exam, you might need to check, like show your work for how you did this. And so you'll probably need to look at a reference sheet or have the equation memorized for how to convert between the two, um, understanding how the two different temperature scales are set and scaled um, can help you derive that equation on the fly. But let's say we're here to check our work. 89 degrees Fahrenheit is slightly below um, like normal, well, that's like a warm summer day. Um, but anyway, we're gonna type in 89 and then I'm going to go to second and then convert. And then I have various different conversions. This is a temperature one. And so I'm going to scroll down to where it says temperature. The English metric one is mostly about um, going from like feet to meters, gallons to liters, and other English to metric conversions. And so you can explore all the different options, but for now I'm going to go to temperature and it shows you what unit are you starting in and what unit are you trying to get to. So I'm starting in Fahrenheit and I want to get to Celsius. And so I'm going to choose this one that's already selected by default. But if I wanted one of the other ones, I could scroll over. So make sure the one that your highlight, the one that you want is highlighted and then you can hit enter, and then it will tell you what the temperature is in that other unit. So now I know that my degrees Celsius should be 31.667 degrees Celsius, and then I'd have to go through 
my real calculation where I've shown my work to figure out the appropriate significant figures and how to report that.